Hello everyone and welcome to UKIO. My name is Namjoo Kansen and I'm joined by Joe Kamara. Hi everyone. So we've got another fantastic guest here who's been referred on to us by someone else. <laughs> Do you want to introduce yourself please? Yes, thank you both of you. My name is Eleutherios Kinegos. I'm glad you introduced yourself yes. rather than me. My accent would not have been so special. No. But everyone calls me L, much easier. <laughs> So, what do you do? Well, on the 19th, officially, I'll be starting with In Health Group. I will be the Recruitment and Engagement Manager. So, looking forward to it, something completely new. And um, I thought I'd jump into the deep end, come to the UKI before starting. So, what is your professional background? Background began in law. Okay, uh, slightly being, different then. Very different, yes. No, being Greek, you're either successful being a lawyer, doctor, um, or an accountant, so I went down the legal route. <laughs> um, fantastic, loved it through university, yeah. but had a huge moral conflict. Practicing, didn't feel happy, and initially I wanted to help people, but at the end of the day it came to a paycheck, right. which wasn't good. So my uncle, you both know, uh, said... You know, shall, we, shall we be the uncle that we shall not name? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but, you know, he said, think of what I have in terms of my own skills, soft skills, yeah. and he thought recruitment would be a good fit. So I gave it a shot, completely new, very yeah. different working environment, uh, very KPI heavy. So I joined a very large corporate agency, yeah. and it was fantastic, I learned a lot, but I kind of hit the roof. I wanted to expand more um, and really help people more. I was more working within the tech sectors, which was great. I then moved on to another agency to build out their entire contract team, which again was fun, new experience, met numerous individuals. Um, but again, I didn't feel like I was giving back. I was learning so much about the development of technology and AI and how it's going to change the world, but I wasn't at the forefront of the change. Um, so then, yes, the opportunity in health came along, and of course, the integration of the tech world within the medical world, coming med tech, is going to be huge and will save lives, so hopefully be at the forefront. What have you found interesting at UKIO conference so far? I think the negativity around AI. Oh, see that's really interesting. Because a lot of people are saying, well why would I need a machine to do my job for me? Yeah. Or to merely throw up a report which will take me 20 seconds or certain discrepancies. Now, the thing is an AI algorithm is constantly evolving. So the more scans, it scans through. It's learning what the library's building. So every new scan you put into it, there'll be a lot of minute things that maybe a radiologist won't spot. Maybe they're tired. Maybe it's the 15th scan of the morning. So it does help. You know, everything will become automated. Having things on-prem is slightly safer than having things cloud-based, but at the same time, it's a risk it can get damaged. You know, having things in the cloud, yes, security is going to be much tighter, much more difficult. You're going to need a lot of, you know, whether it's software developers or DevOps engineers, DevSecOps engineers working with the security itself, but it is the future. So I'm seeing a lot of conflict, a lot of people saying, no, we don't want to use it, we don't need it. Yeah. Um, but I think they will. I think, they I think will. some, just from my own personal experience, I think some of the, the fear of AI is the unknown. So if people don't really know how it's being utilised, how it's being implemented, the regulations around it, I think sometimes that stops people from really knowing how it could be utilised effectively within the good old NHS. Um, and we're currently running an AI series, so we've released the first one today, so that's perfect timing that you've mentioned it. Um, so working with InHealth, what do InHealth do? In health, so the department I'll be working for with Johnny, who I report to, we're part of the radiologists and radiographers. So, of course, in health, do all the reporting as long as, as well as the imaging themselves. Um, so, instead of you know, such as other companies or competitors where they only do the reporting, but we do everything the imaging and reporting itself. So, revolutionary, huge company, doing good for the world. Um, yes. But again, like I said, I start on the 19th, so um, still yet <laughs> to be You're still immersed. waiting to be uh, indoctrinated. What are you most looking forward to with them? It's a very good question. Sounds like an interview question. <laughs> it does. I think it's, I don't want to sound obnoxious, and I don't mean it in that way, but seeing you want to build a legacy is a very vague term. Yeah. I don't want to be known or for everyone to know my name, but 
to know I can help a particular department increase, which saves more lives, that's what I'm excited for. I want to be able to help in health reach the figure of, I believe it's 5 million patients worldwide to be helped. So that's what's exciting. And in terms of recruitment, so I'm going to use your knowledge and skills that you've learned. So I work at a university, I recruit therapeutic radiography students and diagnostic and other AHP professions. And it's nationally, there is a recruitment issue in um, recruiting to undergraduate programmes. What do we need to do to increase recruitment? <laughs> it's relationships. Right, okay. Everyone I've worked with, whether it's on the client side or the candidate side of things, they're my friends. They're on my WhatsApp. We catch up on a weekly basis. I generally, yes, work is important. It's five days a week. You know, you're there more than you are at home, really, but you have to be friends. And yeah. people are missing out on that. Other recruiters or agencies, they see people as a dollar sign or as a placement or as a bum to fill on a seat. It's the complete opposite. Become friends with someone and they will follow you and you will follow them coincidentally. So it's building relationships and Although I might get into trouble for trying to be friends with sixteen year old students. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but again, on the other side of things it's showing you as a person, personality which you're doing very well, I must admit. So but it's getting to know them as well. You know, people like to talk about themselves. Clearly I haven't stopped. So it's just engaging with people. On that, so on the in-house stand, what can people come and see if they come, and come over to visit the exhibition spot? Absolutely. So the most important thing is the pick and mix stand, which is incredible. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, That's how you build a relationship. Lunch, so <laughs> it's cool. yes. it's right there. Um, but apart from that, you can speak with Johnny, who I report to within the radiologist department, as well as our director of operations. See the entire offering we do offer as a package. Um, of course, we're even there to kind of talk to your radiologists as well. Um, we've asked what the benefits are to working with in health. Um, of course, in my opinion, the biggest USP is not having to wait for work. Yeah. Um, having constant work, there is a huge benefit. Everyone has bills to pay, families to, to bring up. So having constant work is important. Um, and of course, understanding the reach the entire group covers, because the radiology, radiologist department is you know, only a small part, but it's a vast, uh, vast beast. Oh, well, thank you so thank much you. for thank joining you. us. Pleasure to speak to you. Your uncle will be pleased that we finally got you on the podcast. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.